What's going on, guys? Uh, where am I again? What's going on, guys? Pixelated here, back at it again with another video. Today we are comparing the Alexander Wang Run in Cream White versus the famed Ultra Boost. This is the truth segment where we compare two sneakers in different categories and see which one comes out on top. I'm sure you have a lot of questions about this shoe since it's such a recent release and not much info about comfort for these out there for them. And of course the Ultra Boost has been the standard of comfort for quite some time. Now, whether it has been surpassed by few sneakers or not is still a subjective matter. So it only made sense to make this comparison. Here we have the Ultra Boost rating champ in the 3.0 pattern to compare these two. The Alexander Wang runs are a collab sneaker with well-known high-end fashion designer Alexander Wang. He's released a handful of other sneakers with Adidas before these, including the B-Ball, which I still really want. And of course, Raining Champ is a Canadian clothing company that focuses on premium materials and a timeless look when it comes to their apparel. Hence the simple but unique material-heavy design of this particular Ultra Boost 3.0. We are going to be looking at three categories when comparing these sneakers, and we are going to start off with the first category, which is the comfort category, where we focus on the midsole and a few other features of the sneaker to determine how much value you're really getting and whether you'll get what you desire when it comes to being comfortable from the sneaker. The Alexander Wang Run is truly a very unique sneaker and I can say this with extreme confidence that you most likely will not find very many sneakers in the market similar to this one. Very unique, out there and unfamiliar characteristics of the shoe. One thing that you will find familiar is the full length boost midsole. While the rest of the sneaker might have you scratching your head, at least when it's off foot, since it's essentially flat and looks like a sock stretching across a boost midsole, the boost midsole guarantees that you'll have some form of satisfactory cushioning and a decent on foot experience at the very least. Well, I'm here to tell you that the experience is far better than decent and we'll get into that in a bit. We then have the reigning champ Ultra Boost over here in the 3.0 model of the Ultra Boost. Of course, the familiar Ultra Boost midsole is here. It's been implemented and it's entirely unchanged from the first Ultra Boost model. If we haven't determined this before, the main difference between every progressively new version of Ultra Boost is the prime knit strength, consistency, and pattern in particular. The heel cup is largely the same as is the lace cage so we'll have to discuss that in the next category right now we're looking at the tried and true ultra boost midsole and how the alexander wang run compares the Alexander Wang Run Boost midsole most definitely is thicker and has a larger amount of boost than the Ultra Boost midsole. Alexander Wang wanted to do right by his fashion minions, so he asked, scratch that, he demanded Adidas drop more of them boost pellets up in his sneakers, and what do you think Adidas did when they heard that? Are you fucking playing? This is the wangster we're talking about. What Mr. Wang asks, he gets. So boom, his sneakers are now more cushy technically than the traditional Ultra Boost. That is definitely a fact, I did not make that up. It's not a story that's just fabricating itself in my mind. This is also part of the newer form of Boost to me, similar to what you'll find on the EQT 9317 or the Yeezy 350 V2. The defining characteristics to me of this new Boost is that the pellets are larger, softer, and more cushy, whereas older Boost midsoles look like they have small pellets that are more condensed together. You can definitely feel it when you wear these. The boost squishes and there's more compression going on when you hit the floor. The thing is though, and I can't pinpoint this directly, but I have a few ideas, but the Ultra Boost midsole still puts up a good fight when it comes to comfort. These sneakers are really neck and neck, even with the new upgraded boost the Alexander Wang Run has, which I should mention is primarily speculation on my part, since Adidas hasn't made any official declaration or anything that they're using a different consistency of boost in newer models. It's just blatantly obvious if you observe the boost midsole on this. What I think is holding the Alexander Wang Run back from destroying the Ultra Boost with fly colors is one this thicker outsole because it's so thick versus the ultra boost paper thin outsole right here look at this the continental outsole is so thin like come on look at all that flex look at all that flex because this is so thick see like look at that not as much flex the second is the shape of the boost midsole in general as it has a more flat style midsole shape similar to something you would see on the Iniki or the NMD, although I would venture to say that this is far more comfortable than both of those, where the Ultra Boost midsole is more curved upwards and inwards to provide a little bit of flex and feedback with every step. Nonetheless, this is a very close call, but with the extra feedback you get from the Ultra Boost shaped boost midsole, the Ultra Boost takes the comfort category by a hair. 
the Ultra Boost lives to win another battle, but has it won the war? Let's find out. Hype Army style. On to the second category of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is the fit category, where we focus more on the upper of the sneaker and how well it fares in terms of comfort and just an overall better fit. Of course, we have the all too familiar Ultra Boost, but in the 3.0 variation, the Ultra Boost was and still is primarily made to be a running sneaker. However, most people nowadays buy it as a lifestyle or casual sneaker, and that purpose is only validated when other brands collaborate on a sneaker to appeal to the sneakerheads and mass market consumers alike. The main difference between the Ultra Boost 3.0 versus the older 1.0 and 2.0 is the prime knit upper of the 3.0 is much softer and has more give. This is especially true since I can actually wear them at half a size down with the insole in. At first I thought I could only wear it at half down with the insole out, but the insole sunk in a bit and we're good. I can attest to just how baby bottom soft this upper is. It's crazy. Like I've never felt anything like it. And I think the 3.0 is supremely underrated for it. Another thing I've noticed is the fit is extremely important in determining how much of the boost you feel. So if you're going to go half a size up in your ultra boost and have space in the toe box, you're definitely not feeling the boost the same way someone with no space in the toe box is. With that being said, I think we can safely say the fit of the ultra boost is excellent. Although I will say this, the opening of the 3.0 feels less snug than the older ultra boost. And although it's a more cozy fit, it feels less secure, preventing the ultra boost from having the same fit it has with older models and potentially reducing boost effectiveness like let's put it this way if i were a runner i'd feel comfortable running in the 1.0 or 2.0 ultra boost but i do have my doubts in these with that being said the aw wang kind of picks up the slack where the ultra boost left off the run has this sock like upper where we have this second upper panel wrapping around and simulating the look of a crew length sock in a cream colorway now obviously not everyone's a fan of this look based on the comments on my review for the sneaker in the past quite a few weren't a fan of this silhouette at all but there were definitely a ton of people that were i think these are absolutely phenomenal on top of that the fit is very taut it does take a tad bit of work to put these on to my surprise but the fit is near perfect if I didn't have pancake wide feet, I'd give this sneaker a 10 out of 10 for fit. I went half a size down in these and aside from some minor foot spellage on the side over here, which technically has no effect on performance or comfort, these sneakers not only fit my foot perfectly, but the added lace cage, as minimal as it is, actually keeps my foot secure and gives it that lockdown feel you'd get from a non-sock like upper. You'd think a sneaker that looks 90% like a sock would feel loose and sock like, and that couldn't be further from the truth. And it's weird because all parts of the sneaker seem like they're independent from each other and that's the beauty of it. Everything is so seemingly modular but works so perfectly. Even the seemingly useless removable tongue actually serves a purpose to prevent the lace cage from digging into your foot. The toggle lacing system gives you a lockdown feel while the soft elastic mesh slash prime knit upper provides your foot with a soft and secure fit. For that reason, the Alexander Wang Run wins the fit category. Moving on to the final category that's gonna determine the winner of this battle, it is the style category. Now this is the real controversial category that's most likely going to split many people apart and I can understand why, but I'm going to state my case anyway. As a disclaimer, once again, style is subjective, so no matter what I say, always think about what you like first and pave your own way. You don't always have to follow the hype god known as pixelated. I mean, if you do, I wouldn't be mad, but it's your choice. There's a clear winner in my eyes over here, but just in terms of a larger fan base and proven track record in the market, the Ultra Boost is the clear cut choice for many people. It's got a sleek runner's design, the flat laces, soft prime knit upper, and this particular collab has premium materials such as the suede heel cup and leather cage to accent the gray sneaker. It's really a shoe that you can style and dress up or down however you like. The AW Run on the other hand is a little out there, not as sleek, not as versatile as the Ultra Boost. I will admit that I do have a little trouble styling this over the ultra boost but to me that's the beauty of it when i know i can wear this sneaker with only a handful of outfits whereas the ultra boost i can toss on with any outfit it tells me that this sneaker is more distinct than the competition the alexander wang run might be a little harder to pull off but when you do 
boy does it blow the Ultra Boost out of the water. Sure, the colorway of the Reigning Champ Ultra Boost 3.0 is essentially universal too. A light gray sneaker goes with literally everything you throw at it, but that kind of relegates it to a jack of all trades and master of none archetype. The white, cream, and blue colorway of this Alexander Wang Run sneaker along with the modular design is just something that's eye-catching and wearable at the same time, though rightfully slightly more limiting when it comes to fits, but because of these reasons, the Alexander Wang Run wins the style category because outfits just pop a little more with a sneaker like this. And there you have it folks, the winner of this versus is the Alexander Wang Run. The Ultra Boost made for some really strong competition however, and there were times where I really couldn't decide which was better, but the Wang Meister strikes again. With that being said, that's the end of my video. If you got anything from this video, please hit that like button. P let me know what you guys thought about this comparison, what you prefer, and please hit that subscribe button for more juicy content. Catch you later. Pixelated out.